Hi guys, it's uh, another Wednesday, which means it's another review of Warhammer Conquest. Uh, today's issue is issue number seven. Let's uh, get this thing open. Then. Okay, let's have a little see what we have. <coughs> Again, little bending because of the packaging, but this one, frankly, <sighs> pretty much straight. And we have two fantastic paints. I'm shaking, I'm not even planning to use them, just automatically shaking them. We have Agrax Earthshade and Non Oil. Um, <sighs> pretty much skill in a bottle to anyone who doesn't know what these are. Um, <clears throat> I'll quickly go through. These aren't paints. What they are is washes or shades, <clears throat> which you paint over models to give a more 3D effect. So I've got a video basically telling you how to base wash a model. If you want to see <clears throat> what these do, go and watch that video. But basically, uh, <clears throat> they allow you to create, as I say, a more three-dimensional effect on your model as they sink into the into the dips and cracks and wash a little bit off the raised areas really bringing out detail so given what the magazine has been going through so far with painting this is literally the next step in uh, painting your miniatures they're worth roughly five pound each <clears throat> meaning that possibly one of the least value for money um <clears throat> copies of uh, Warhammer Conquest, but frankly, if you're learning to paint, and if you are young and you've been learning to paint along with the uh, previous issues one to six, <sighs> learning to use these is probably worth more to you than the models, because it means every model you paint from now on you can shade, and all of a sudden your model get your your model painting game is going to rise by an entire level of stuff to the next level of cool. So. Yeah, probably worth a little less in raw cash value, but frankly, probably one of the most valuable in just what it brings to the actual person buying the magazine and the experience um, in painting that they're going to get. Uh, so still not shabby at all. As I say, frankly, <clears throat> learning to paint models and getting better at it makes everything you get from now on more fun. <clears throat> right, let's actually look at the issue. As always, the can the can the content table telling you what's gonna be in your uh, in your uh, magazine. <clears throat> We've got the making of a space marine which basically describes what um, <clears throat> goes into building these superhuman monsters. Uh, and how they're uh, recruited. Ooh. <clears throat> we have all the uh, extra organs and bits implanted into a space marine, and here in red, the three additional ones that make up a Primaris, which is <clears throat> frankly fantastic. Ooh, domains. <clears throat> Hope this is going to be a regular one. It's explaining to you the domain of Ultramar, which is kind of the mini empire ruled over by the ultramarines <clears throat> it will be very interesting to see if oh that's a fantastic picture it will be very interesting to see if that um continues on i would like to see regular bits on the different domains of all the different marine um chapters <clears throat> There is, there is quite a lot written about all the marine chapters and a bunch of their domains, but just seeing how they all work would be nice. <clears throat> that is a fantastic picture. Um, whilst <sighs> part of me wants to keep it in a folder, part of me wants to put that in a frame and put it on my wall. That, yeah, that looks really good. You've got the Ultramar subsector, the Verdi system, the McCrag system, and all you all, yeah. That there basically is a map of the mini empire that is Ultramar, and here are some of the main subsectors. <clears throat> so, no interest there. There you've got the successor chapters, 
along the lit explanation of why there are chapters and why it moved from the old pre-heresy legion style into the new um, <coughs> style there. Um, the chapter they've chosen there is the Silver Templars. Do, 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 do. Very nice. <coughs> Oops, some more successor chapters there. Giving you a few more paint schemes to try on your Marines. Uh, I do like the size, very waspish. Um, oh, the silver skulls. <clears throat> I like the silver skulls, um, not because they're particularly cool, but simply down to the fact that they are one of the original chapters on the old um, Beaky Box Marines. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when Marines first came out, they came out in what's known as a box of Beaky Marines. Um, Initially, there were individual lead marines made, but one of the first plastic kits you've got was a white plastic kit with little, kind of weirdly stood, um, beaky marines. And around the outside of that box, they had a list of different chapters, um, including a bunch of <laughs> successor chapters. I don't know if they defined the successor chapters at that point, but they had the original chapters and the successor chapters. They had the flesh terrors, they had the silver skulls, they had the iron hands. Um, a lot of it didn't really differ. Yeah, they had the world bearers and the world eaters. Um, a lot of it didn't really differentiate. Did they have the world bearers? They had the world eaters anyway. Um, so a lot of it didn't really seem to differentiate between what was chaos and what wasn't. It was just a big collection of awesome marine chapters and the silver skulls are one of those chapters. And here, as I said, is one of the cool bits, how to paint with shades. <clears throat> I mean, you can see just from that picture the difference that these shades are going to make to your painting game. And frankly, if you haven't used shades before, if you haven't <sighs> learned to dry brush, they're both really, really simple techniques that will just improve your painting game immensely. And again, we've got little bits there, how to paint, how to add shades to your pre-existing models. <clears throat> you can see from the pictures how much detail it's going to bring out and how it's going to completely change the, com the complexion of what you've done. Um, yeah, I cannot go on enough about how good shades are and how much they're going to change. <clears throat> your painting game if you've been learning to paint from these magazines. If you haven't, but you still don't know what shades are, what have you been doing? Get on the channel, look at shading, look at dry brushing. Trust me, your models will be so much better. Um, do, 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 do. Another mission. Ooh, sorry. Uh, as always, these missions are cool. You've got a nice rules update here. Um, extra rules and additional bits. Uh, falling back, um, how to do it, how it works. The mission itself is called Secure the Gene Seed. And yeah, basic things. Um, you've got some extra rules, plasma guns, inexorable fire. Um, bringing in some of the, oh sorry, bringing in some of the codex disciplines. And Ooh, sorry. <sighs> Tired and Tourette's-y. What a combo. Um, yeah. <laughs> and again, subscribe to Warhammer Quest. <clears throat> um, as I say, I'm not subscribing because I'm supporting one of my uh, local shops by buying this from them every time. Always support your local shops, even if in this case it's just a local news agent. You know, encouraging my local news agent to have some of these by buying them means hopefully kids who aren't necessarily interested in 40k will see them and buy them and we'll get other kids into it it's all about supporting the hobby yeah and remember the hobby exists because we make it exist if we stop supporting the hobby it'll go away <coughs> it's one of those things that doesn't mean you're locked into supporting the hobby <laughs> Sorry. but it's always worth thinking about when you're buying things it might be cheaper from the internet but if you don't have a local friendly gaming store Who's going to encourage people to start playing 40k? It might be easier to convert mods, but if you're not buying stuff from GW or from other uh, model makers, 
how are they going to keep making models? Um, that being said, if you're buying stuff from them and converting models, that's great. But, you know, a lot of people are sort of going for recasts and stuff like that, which I get because it's cheaper and you can do so many weird things. But if you don't support the guys that are making the game, then they'll stop making the game. It's a business like anything else. Um, as I say, I buy this locally. However, <sighs> you do have to be wise about where you buy it from. I'm buying a GW product, which means GW support. But by buying it from a local shop, uh, I'm not only supporting that local shop, I'm encouraging them to push GW products onto other people. Uh, I get products from my local GW store because I want them there to be a local GW store, but I also buy products from my uh, friendly local independent gaming store because I want there to be a friendly local independent gaming store. And no, I don't just mean I pick up a pot of paint every time I go down there to play a game. I spend a reasonable amount of money in there because I need them to exist, because I need more friends and more people to play games with. Uh, it's basically that simple. These things exist because you make them exist. By the power of our wallets combined! Uh, <laughs> blah, 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 lecture. <clears throat> Next week is issue eight, which is probably going to be one of the more, uh, one of the higher value for money issues. <sighs> um... Because you're getting a Primaris, and those are quite expensive. No Primaris, you're getting a Psyker. There you go. You're getting a Primaris Psyker, one of the more expensive models, <clears throat> and really cool. Uh, the only sort of downside I say to that is we're at week eight, and the Space Marines have got two characters. The Death Guard seem to have a big fat zero, and whilst I'm sure Nurgle likes being on fat things like the number zero. It would be nice to see um, some more characters and just you can see there, issue nine. Again, there's not going to be any characters. Mm. Sorry. For Death Guard. Uh, don't worry. We've seen the whole of what they're getting. The characters are definitely going to be coming. It's just a bit, a bit of a shame that we're not getting on this thing. I mean, maybe it's because Death Guard with their uh, cultists work on more of a swarm mechanic, so they needed to get those models out there. <sighs> That's possibly it. However, poxwalkers are nice and poxwalkers are good. Okay, uh, I'll be back in a minute to announce the winner of last, sorry, of two weeks ago's competition. And I'm back. Uh, after having rolled a mighty D6 to decide between the uh, two comments, it is dad9456. Uh, I think it's the second time he's won. Uh, however, as I said, there are only two comments, so it's a 50-50 chance. Uh, I've got your address, mate, and I'll be sending these to you as soon as I can get to a post office. Okay, have a nice day, guys. Bye. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not sure why, but I am. Um, so, if you like it, see me there. And uh, please tell your friends. Thanks very much. Bye.